K Stop Views' K pop podcast. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Jeff Benjamin. And <laughs> as usual, I am joined by the guy in to my Narsha, Tina Zhu. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Happy uh, Thanksgiving week, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving week, indeed. We actually kind of have a bit of a Thanksgiving themed episode right now. Yeah. So um, we hope you guys will enjoy it and mm-hmm. we'll. Uh, as you hopefully do every episode because we love (laughs) having you guys here um, and always chatting with you guys and seeing your comments on um, all the different ways to interact with K-Stop. You know you can always hit us up with the hashtag K-Stop on Twitter. You can leave a comment on Fuse.tv. Fuse.tv slash K-Stop where all these episodes are archived and posted. You can find us on iTunes. You can find us specifically on Twitter. My name is Jeff underscore underscore Benjamin. And I'm Hey underscore Tina with three A's. Yes. So, um, yeah. Thanks, everyone, for checking in. And as we always say, you guys are as much of this show as we are, which is why we um, we look for your comments every week. Um, quick shout out to um, um, to uh, at Yeller Van on Twitter, Danielle Van Warren, who um, actually it's kind of funny because she – sent uh, she saw my review on fuse of, of shiny's new single and said like yeah i'm loving everything except the rap and i was like i was thinking like oh just wait until till you hear the latest case stop because that's exactly what i said and then she hit me up and saying i just listened to hashtag case stop totally agree with you <laughs> and i was like yep that's right <laughs> so um yeah and just um, one more comment we need to respond to is um quick shout out is that um we had a bit of some technical issues on, on the on the production side of things yesterday oh, if, right, if you, right, if right, you right, heard right, some yeah. different music uh, um that was a mistake we didn't get a new theme song <laughs> and, um <laughs> you know we didn't we decided not to go with the acoustic pop sound yet we um, actually didn't realize it happened until after the facts so i was listening to it and i was like that's not <laughs> the intro. Yes. Yeah, so it was like a guitar strumming, yeah. like happy dandy. I'm like, right. that's not. Something yeah. slipped slipped by uh, someone in the production side of things. So we apologize if you were taken aback by without your classic case stop opening. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Our <laughs> uh, very. I don't know. I call it 21 inspired opening. It is. It's, it's a like, little. Um, well, it is like a remix of it. Is it? Because it was but taken. But it's free. It was free, but that's why it was free because it was. Um, oh, it's kind of like derivative. Right, a right. Derivative copy. Yeah. Okay. Well, there we go. Okay. So don't worry. License Hopefully. Free, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, um, and anyone can grab that one. But we hope in your heart it, it's the it's only the theme song to K Stop. Right. And, um, you guys are hopefully you were comforted by hearing it this time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, the opening of this episode. So yes, thanks so much for the comments and. For the concerns, we uh, we appreciate it all. Last but not least, of course, we ask you guys every week to let us know what your favorite release of the week was. Last week, we reviewed Shinies. Tell me what to do, like we said. Tiara's Tiamo and Astro's Confession. Um, this one, I was kind of I was kind of curious how this battle would work out because we both voted Shiny. Yes, yeah. and so did the viewers with well. our listeners with sixty three percent of the vote. Shiny came some comes in first. Tiara put up a good fight with thirty seven percent of the votes, and poor little Astro. Astro it hasn't really made ca- got still, up there they're, yet. They they're, are still rookies. Yeah, so. well, one percent. So um, uh, maybe even a little less than one percent. But Oosh. you know, we are we are rooting for that. You know, we we wouldn't highlight that if we didn't see something special with them. And you know, I definitely feel like they're kind of a standout boy band of this year. So. Yeah, but um, thanks you guys so much for voting. All the all the all the uh, shiny and Tiara and Astro fans who came mm. out. So, so I feel like we just need to get right into the music because we got kind of a cool episode, I think. Yeah. So I'm um, really into it. Why don't we kick it off with what I think is probably the most interesting release mm. in the past few weeks, yeah. if anything, or months. I don't know. Um, it's very intriguing. Sister mm-hmm. came out with a non-album single featuring um, like 
Disco EDM King Giorgio. Um, not sure how to pronounce his last name. Maroder, maybe. Maroder, yeah. Um, Giorgio. Excuse my Giorgio ignorance. Maroder. I do not know a whole lot about this man, uh-huh. but I know he's very well respected in the oh, industry. Oh yeah, totally. He's been around for you know decades. And yeah. No, that's the thing too is that you know like for sure like quick backstory is just like you know he's kind of been you know very much big in like the disco era like was kind of like a big you know person who got into this synth synthesizers Synthi, right. you know really like you know that's his like sort of signature sound this right, like right. you know very you know huge in like the dance world and everything has like this really huge career he just well he put out an album it was either earlier this year or last year that just had like so many like Britney Spears and Kylie Minogue and Sia and so many big names were on it that mm-hmm. like you know it's just because this guy's kind of like a legend in that right, world right. and you know the dance music world and um, I just didn't realize that he and Sistar had linked up and right. I read online uh, just doing some research and it said there was an article that said he was at um, or they introduced the song at a festival first right uh-huh. and then he was in the audience and he was you know very proud and beaming and yeah. Um, it, and it wasn't until I think yesterday that it was um, officially released with the music video. Oh, sorry. This, the song is called One More Day. Right. Yes, yes, yes. The song. And right. Yeah. Which is, any, you know, it's kind of cool, you know, because like this is the guy who kind of like did like Donna Summer's like first hits. Like he, mm-hmm. that's kind of like what he like first came out of. And to see him still s- like just first and foremost, just to see him say like, you know, Staying on top of people, you know, right. not only like, you know, getting Britney Spears and Sia and you right. know Kylie, people like that on his like last album. But then also, you know, looking at Korea and like K-pop mm-hmm. and everything, it just kind of shows this guy's like kind of, you know, he's done it all and right. he's still looking and for something he's fresh still searching and exciting. for the next, you know, the n- I guess the next big collaboration for him yeah. and like trying uh, to seek out new New ideas, right. new, new artists. Um, so cool. New territory, essentially. Yeah. No, exactly. So I, um, yeah, I'm just like, you know, just first and foremost about the song, you know, I think it's like, it's really cool. I don't I don't know. I think it's like he, right. he, so kind of my little qualm about him, at least, is that, you know, even with that last album, you know, it had a lot of cool names on it. But a lot of those songs, like if you, if anyone knows, um, the C- he did the song with Sia, um, it was called a uh, deja vu. Like, I don't know if you, anyone heard the single, but you know, it was all right. It was kind of like, almost like a little hokey, like very, just very lots of disco violins, right. things like that. But this sounds really, really fresh and exciting. And, okay. and I, I kind of liked the dark disco sound that was going on. I think it was, yeah, I think it's like one of the best things he's done. In okay. Minutes. Yeah. No, I was going to say just standalone, point of view just mm-hmm. because i'm not familiar with his previous work i don't know how to compare this oh yeah 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 and to say oh i like this compared <laughs> to this and this because i yeah. don't have anything to compare it to mm. but just the song itself i'm really digging it yeah i haven't heard something like this in a while and you know right. uh k-pop has been on this kind of uh, like dance edm wave right. but this is not like what we are when we imagine EDM, like the blaring horns, the, right. the festival craziness, <laughs> like this is kind of like uh, more somber, darker, yeah. moodier. Yeah, um, dark. I yeah. really, really like that. Um, and I was thinking like I would probably like listen to this, you know, without the video just on its own, oh, yeah. um, which I think says a lot about anything that's dancey or EDM <laughs> heavy because sometimes you can't necessarily listen to it unless you're in right. this particular setting in and a particular mode. mood environment. <laughs> so I think it is a more versatile track in that sense. Yeah. And uh, I I guess I didn't really ever think that Sistar would do a sound mm, like this because mm-hmm. they are a very bright, summery girl group like girl group yeah who's no very, totally like, positive vibes and yeah you know um, dance floor anthem exactly you know, like, right 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 really feel some hook. good things um didn't really wouldn't expect someone especially like bora to to do mm. something like this granted she really didn't have that that many lines on this well, she comes in with track. that rap i love that rap the very the short <laughs> the very <laughs> short rap. comes comes like right at the end right. to save it but um <laughs> but i liked it um yeah no i i 100 agree with you you know like if anything sort of their um the the i like that song almost felt like you know if they had done this right after doing like all their 
you know, booty shaking, you know, yeah. summer anthems. But this one, you know, I like that almost kind of, I felt like set the stage for this a little bit. Yeah, you know? no, I think so too. It's kind of cool. So I, I'm very much a fan of, of the song and I'm even a bigger fan of the music video, I have to say. I am too. And yeah. more, well, see, I feel like whenever a music video doesn't have the actual artists mm -hmm. in it, the storyline has got to be like oh, yeah. on point, right? right. Oh, and yeah. this one truly had a very dramatic, yeah. dark storyline. And other than a few seconds of um, Mr. Giorgio in the beginning with the mask, <laughs> right. um, for a few seconds, there he is. Yeah. Um, that the artists themselves weren't in this production. Right. I do kind of wish they were. I, and I, and I do, yeah. You know, it would have taken it up a notch even more yeah. and made it slightly more, like, controversial, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, because, yeah. Because, well, I don't know. Do, do you want to? Well, yeah. I, well, we'll look at right into it. Yeah, you yeah. know, it kind of has the storyline of, um, I guess it's, you know, this I feel like the beginning of the storyline is almost not that new for K-pop, but kind of how it continues on and what it yeah. shows specifically gets very, you know, new territory for K-pop. It's like two female friends who, and one of them is dating a guy and, you know, the guy and the girl seem like, you know, they're close and, you know, close and whatnot. But the one friend is seemingly longing for the other friend mm -hmm. and the other friend seems to, you know, respond to her. And then you kind of see their relationship grow right. and they get more touching, more intimate with each other. And at right. one point they kiss one another. And then I guess, you know, I was really nervous at one point because I, it almost the guy, I guess, finds them or something. And, you know, almost like gets well, he does violent. get physical he with them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, gets physical with both of them. And then, you know, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched it. But in the end, you know, both girls take him down right. and. I guess kill him right. and like set him on fire With, and like yeah you know. like very morbidly yeah um, they stuff him in a because, suitcase right because he a starts small he starts beating up yeah. his I guess I'm gonna assume that she's the girlfriend um, right. the short haired one yeah and so he tries to drag her away mm -hmm. and she tries to fight back I guess or resist so he like smacks the shit out of her <laughs> yeah. and then the girl who her her friend who's in love with her yeah. um came to try to save her mm -hmm. so then mm -hmm. he starts like trying to beat up both of them and then yeah. the, the long-haired girl like takes a brick and like oh, yeah. savagely like they are relentless bricks him in the head bricks him and they smash not uh, one bottle but two bottle yeah. two alcohol bottles so, like, over just his head. in case he wasn't like out just in case his skull wasn't cracked right. enough <laughs> so then they're like oh well we have to destroy the body so they like light his it's a very like kind of like your textbook um <laughs> trying to get away with murder yes yeah you know totally. solution <laughs> yeah um he's in like a yeah they stuff him in like a small very small suitcase right you know? so i guess the whole vibe of the video was very dark and somber but then it got just very <laughs> very dramatic yeah. and very um <laughs> very intense yeah uh, very quickly I, you know, like I got to say, like, you know, I love the fact that it has a sort of LGBTQ friendly yes. storyline for such a global collaboration. Right. You know, like it, it'd be one thing if like it's it was, was a risky move. Oh, totally yeah. a risky move. And, you know, and that's almost why I do wish that, you know, there were the members were in it, too, because that would have been such a cool it been a statement. It would have been like a statement, like you know, a cosign. Yeah, this um, is a it's a statement in and of itself. You know, I'm right. not sure who decided the treatments, you know, for the video or whatnot. You right. know, it is, it is, I think it's officially Sistar featuring Giorgio. Right. But, um, but yeah, it would, you know, that would, it's just such a cool, it, it is, it is a really cool, a really friendly statement. And I love that it is for a collaboration that's likely going to get probably more new listeners right. than you know tip than a typical sister right. release would have right. gotten you know because there are i think you know a lot of dance fans you know he's huge in the gay community like a lot of fans there you know are going to see this and really right. dig seeing that from korea and right. i think that's really and that'll awesome. open up hopefully more doors for sister yeah it, it, it's uh. like it paints like a new side of them that i feel like a lot of fans new and old really haven't seen from them right um and you know if someone's not if if a new listener isn't aware of sistar you know they might mm -hmm. be a little confused to be like oh you know i thought sistar was these two girls or, or these two women or True, what you yeah. know but i don't think they'll be disappointed when they right. see you know 
when they see a really fun because Sistar just has such fun, awesome pop music. Right, you know? they just they're just good vibes. Yeah, um, so I don't. I feel like you know a, a, a new listener won't be uh, upset by right. you know not seeing right. you know similar themes because I think yeah, Sistar sort of you know fits that vibe or whatever. Right, right. So I just yeah, I, I love what I they do, have going I, on. And I also appreciate the art direction in this video. Oh, um, yeah. There's, I will say there are some parts where I wish it were a little bit brighter just because it was hard for me to mm, see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But because there was that kind of rosy yeah. filter on there. Um, right, yeah. Right, that the saturation was kind of wonky <laughs> and at certain points. But yeah. um, I thought it really lifted the overall um, aesthetic of the video. Just it really it hel- it helps set the tone and the mood in the video. For sure. Um, yeah. Classic K-pop with I those guess, filters. Like, I wasn't really sure if there was any sig- symbolic significance of the mask in the beginning that Giorgio was holding. Oh, that's just sort of his thing. That's his thing. Yeah. Oh, so he always does that? He always has like, I think I'm almost, bi- he always has like sunglasses or, okay. or a mask or, or oh, something like that. Oh, I didn't know like that. That's that. cool. Okay. Sort of his um. Thing, signature type yeah okay or at least his his the sunglasses were a big thing for the last right, album. right right okay that makes sense <laughs> um but yeah um yeah this was a nice surprise it really came out of nowhere right well i, I remember hearing about this a while ago and yeah like that it was going to be premiered at the festivals and whatnot yeah um yeah i kind of want to see what else i can dig into and, and find right. it you know maybe he'll be working with other korean artists i think it'd be so cool to see him kind of you know like he's one who's a really big collaborator you know it would have been so cool to you know that last album i mentioned um you know just to see a korean artist on there that would have been so cool yeah. but again it's kind of like a very you know this it's a little random but it's not as random right. as it could be no but like sis well not maybe not specifically sister but hyoring at least has She's like fused with Western acts point. like a couple yeah. times, like with Far East Movement, Far's with this, movement. and like I think she's right. really getting out there. And like her sound she's has totally always been very Western friendly, yeah. you know, R and B, no, she sounds diva esque, you on know. A, yeah, exactly. yeah. So I think this is a really good move for her. Granted, she is heard on more of this of the song than the rest of the it group. It is true. Uh, the, her so. parts come to me automatically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and Bora. But, um, but right. yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, is this something you guys are digging? Are you, is this like the right, is this a cool move for you? Are you not digging it? Let us know because we're very curious to hear what you guys might think. Indeed. Who's next on the list, Tina? Next. Um, <sighs> should <laughs> we talk about Let's go with Vix, just because mm-hmm. we didn't we didn't talk about their um, previous release or their comeback right. release, it was a but they week. they released a compilation album. Yes, I believe it's pronounced Ker, K E R. I'm not really sure. Um, I, I'm I'm assuming it's like Greek again. It's got to be with the Greek stuff, right? Yeah. So it has um, stuff from their previous EPs, and then they decided to have um, an official single for this compilation album as well, titled Milk. Milky Way, right? Yeah. Just Milky Way, not like the Milky Way. Right. Okay. Yeah. My gosh, they have not. They have not let up. <laughs> they this, really um, haven't. Yeah. They re- um, they're really going full fledged with this, with this <laughs> concept. Right. Right. The um, quick um, the quick uh, background, but behind Kerr, if you're interested, it was um, it was about like the gods that appeared in like you know greek mythology uh-huh. like the zelos the hades the kratos thing you know those are all part of right, those right, are right. the past three ones but um yeah like sort of um from what i understand yeah kerr is sort of like the i guess supposed to represent all of them i guess or something like okay. i don't know exactly what kerr means but right. yeah that's like um it's kind of um what you already said so we're just gonna keep going <laughs> interesting <laughs> yeah yeah, I mean, I don't know my, like, Greek mythology that well, so can't really speak too much on it. The Kurs are, like, our female death spirits in, 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 in oh. Greek mythology, if you're if you're sort of interested in that. Now I'm just but, really confused, but right. okay. I know, I mean, yeah, it's like, you know, it's been, you know, it's been, like, I, I really applaud them for just, like, the dedication to, like, this, like, They really you know, stuck to this. Yeah, yeah. because... You know, not to name names, but certain people were announced to release multiple albums and multiple releases this year, but they exited 
that oh, plan. And, um, and, you know, I, they're not the only ones, but, um, you know, they, they, people, certain people come to mind. But, yeah, yeah, you know, Vic's really, you know, I think they kind of proved that, you know, we're not here to mess around. You know, we're on year yeah. four. Um, but we're not here to, you know, slow down anytime soon. For sure, and for they sure. kind of, you know, they probably reignited that fan base who were excited to see so many different sides of them. Absolutely. And I think this song is really fun and a bop. This song just didn't really, it, it really felt like an outlier compared mm. to a lot of the previous singles. Granted, we had that random, like, dance floor track they came back with. Oh, the Dynamite song? Yeah. yeah so, like, that. that was kind of funky. Yeah. Um, unexpected, you know, was met with mixed reviews. Right. This one, I feel like it was, like, but more bubbly than what they normally come out with since they are known for such a, like, a darker, vampy-esque yeah. type of vibe. Right. But um, this one, I think, is it was cute. It was fun because it was meant to be um, something that they reached out to their fans with, right? Right. And that's what the music video was, essentially. The, it was yes. just like a, a montage of um, their concert experiences with fans. Yeah. Um, no, exactly. And, and you know, you start Vix's whole thing is like, um, you know, the fan base is called Starlight. Right. Um, you know, so this is kind of like a play to them, yeah. you know. And it's, it's like very, cute. very cool. It's almost like, you know, it's a nice cap off, I think, to everything, too, because it's like, yeah, like, thanks for sticking by us for these three EPs. Right. You know, it's been an intense year, and now here's something for you. Right. Fun fact about it, it's the it was written by – you know, or Ravi, you know, composed right. part of the lyrics, but also Hyuk, who's the baby of the group. Um, this is his first time, like, oh, getting credits that. on, like, a single. Oh, wow. So I always thought he was cool. He was always really, you know, I've interviewed Vix now two or three times, and he mm -hmm. was always, like, a cutie, like, really friendly and stuff right, like that. Right, right. So I was happy to see that, too. That's and dope. Yeah, no, I think it's, um, I think it's, like, it's probably, you know, it's a cute present for fans, like we were kind of saying. Um, it's probably like their most trend, uh, most trendiest song, yeah, like or like trend aligning. Yeah, kind trend of aligning. That's a good way to put like it. That. Yeah, playing no, more totally towards agree. trends. Yeah. You know, um, I, f I, I can see this resonating with listeners more so just because it is like you said more kind of like what you would expect a k-pop song yeah. to sound like it's easier it's easier listening to right. you know it's just kind of like you know not a huge you know like it's fun and easy to listen right. to it's a safe song i like when i listened to it i wasn't blown away but i don't think they were they were trying to get that hooky kind of right. big chart topping mm -hmm. hit because obviously it's not but it's um the purpose of it i don't think was to be that big yeah hit, so. this this certainly does the job as being like a nice thing for fans you know it's awesome right. they did that the fan meetings look incredible they by look the so way fun. i, <laughs> I didn't know like, i honestly didn't know it was of that epic proportion mm. for, right for like, like the, that, them in particular yeah or like do you remember that scene where like it's the stage and it lights up with their with faces. With their faces, I was and like, I was what? Like, oh, I want this that's one day. Dope. Like that's it was great, and they got so close. You know, it's really clear that they like really care about their fans. You right. know, they got so up close with them. A lot of fan them. service, as they call yeah. it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, they got so up and close with yeah. them, and I was like, dang. Like if if you know if Vix does that every time, like they're gonna have like dedicated fans forever. Right. Like, like so we cool. We said before how K-pop is about the fans and mm. a big part of you know the the, the fan meetings and um concerts is um if you're able to get there early get there up mm -hmm. get up close like oh that's why they, they you, the, exactly uh, what do they call a uh, camp out for right. like a day before right, right. You, you, like there's a big opportunity for them to interact with you and it's it's expected yeah you know and um it's it's i guess i would say it's frowned upon if they're more <laughs> cold toward you right. if you are a, a an idol group like that <laughs> and i will say for a music video that's just footage of concerts <laughs> and fan meetings they made it really fun and interesting oh yeah there were so many cute and quirky moments yeah um i really liked how they actually used fan cam footage that was cool too. and i was thinking about that i was and like the composition was very clearly okay well it was taken on a phone yeah because i was thinking about it, i was like don't tell me like they just had staff members like you know <laughs> like like taking the place of like fans you know but i don't right. think it was they probably were like hey you know if you were at a Vix maybe meeting, they crowdsourced it or yeah, something yeah like you know send it in it could be in a Vix music video, right, you know, right, and fans right. are that's a cool thing too. Because like the, yeah. then their footage is part of something that Vix, you know, yeah, puts out and for it forever. Makes it, you're right, and it makes it even more meaningful. Yeah, I liked um, how they had like different uh, points of views, and yeah. you know, they they had you know 
the fans and seeing all the selfie sticks and seeing all the equipment and seeing (laughs) really what goes into getting those up close fan cams because those fans are serious i i feel like they're basically watching the whole concert (laughs) through the just the screen Oh yeah, oh, well, f- I mean, yeah, granted, a lot of people do that here, but <laughs> over there, it's like I can imagine it's like a whole nother level. You know, I, it's so funny because I I remember reading that like you know I was reading about the differences between like you know how kind of like American K-pop fans are and Korean K-pop fans are and like Japanese K-pop fans are, and one of the things they say about uh, like K-pop fans in Korea is that they basically yeah watch the shows or meetings or whatever through the um through the fan cams and Uh they'll like or through their cameras or whatever and they'll like upload photos of the photos to like social media before actually uploading their own photos because they're just so quickly connected and like everything goes like so quickly and everything and i'm like man it's so it's a testament to like that dedication korea is like one of the most plugged in like yes exactly in the world oh my gosh i remember when i was in um when when i was in korea and i went to this uh this festival that like exo Mm -hmm. and um who else was performing red velvet was there and a couple others and they were like, no, they weren't even in the festival, but these are fans on the outsides of the parks with their, you know, intense lenses oh, yeah. that the zoomed zoom in. Lenses, and, you know, yeah. I was like, and everyone had really oh, nice yeah. cameras with zoom right. lenses. I'm like, oh, like my it's not, gosh. it's not even it, like usually these cameras you see professional <laughs> yeah. photographers or like, right. I, like I'll go to I go to like basketball games sometimes. Oh, and these yeah. are like these are like sideline reporters, <laughs> yeah. sideline photographers who need those cameras to do their jobs yeah. not like regular people not just you know young you know fans high school fans yeah. or whatever so it was so amazing to see so i don't know i very I'm, dedicated I'm, right so dedicated but yeah i'm uh, i'm just always very uh, impressed by that so Indeed. i don't know this was a very nice fuzzy feeling yeah, way to it was, end it was 2016. very fuzzy feeling yeah, yeah it was nice so it's a nice it's a nice not nice, but I just say it is a contrast from oh from the previous from the first production. Oh yeah, when you from, needed when you needed from a one break. more day. Yeah, right. Very exactly. different. Mm-hmm. But yeah, let us know what did you what you thought of yes. of the song Milky Way. Um, Starlights, are you happy with the yeah. with the full you know Greek themed release from Vix? I hope they're not gonna like take 2017 off. You know, I hope they get at least one comeback in. You know. Lots of times I feel like, you know, like Girls' Generation did like three singles last year. We haven't seen them this year. So I hope Vix isn't too quiet next year because I do like them. (laughs) And last but not least. A bit bit of a holiday vibe to kind of close out the um, new releases. You planned that, didn't you, Tina? No. You did. (laughs) You just wanted to end with a holiday theme. I love it. (laughs) Um, Brown Eyed Girls, uh, Chea. She comes back with, uh, well, actually a few years after her first solo release, right? Her first yeah. solo EP. Oh my um, gosh. Wow. The song is called Winter, It's You. And she actually came back with um, like a double release, I think, or a double single release. Um, but this one is, I believe, the title track of, yeah. the, of her comeback. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the song is honestly very... Probably what you would imagine a Christmassy K-pop <laughs> song to sound like without it be like a Christmas ballad essentially. Yes. It is a it is a love is a love song love ballad set to the set to kind of a Christmas e tune aesthetic. Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, it's not it's, like jingly or anything. Right, right, right. Well, it's kind of you know got that very like sweeping holiday right. you know, it's cozy, feel to it. Yes, exactly. Fireplace. 100%. String up the lights. A little jazzy. Yes. A little, you know, nothing, you know, s- no dance beats or, you right, know, right. It's more like, <laughs> it's more like you're in, you're in your home by the fireplace <laughs> with like some eggnog versus yes. some, versus like you're out in the snow, like playing in the snow. If yeah. That's like at all accurate of, <laughs> of a comparison. No, I, I think, I think that's right. You know, it just kind of, yeah, it, it's what I... 
I don't even it, it's certainly not it's 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 more mature I don't know I mean I, yeah. I think you know I, I love I do love this kind of music you know it's like it's I just love those classic elements you know like lots of strings right. you know those kind of feelings you know that I love the jazz vibe right. to it this song feels like a, a little all over the place but I still love it like I, I couldn't get a feel for like the melody and the hook like lots of times it sort right. of felt like actually now it was that just sort of Right. Now that you now that you say that, I actually can't really remember what the melody is, <laughs> but um, it is very kind of like standard K-pop ballad. Yeah. I will say, if it weren't, um, if it didn't have a Christmas theme to it, mm. I would maybe skip over this mm, release. Yeah. But I do really like the fact that we're moving into the Christmas season yeah. and this dropped, you know, at an appropriate <laughs> time. And I do love her voice. I think she sounds fantastic on the song. Yes, um, me too. I don't know, because um, I know you really love Brown Eyed Girls. How I does do. Shia, like, stack up <laughs> relative to other members for you? I'm... <laughs> I mean, they're that they're just such a super group, and you know, I right. I really do love them. Um, Cause I know Kying's like one of she. she I mean, she's, she's like right. Up, Narsha's right? right up there with right. for me too. I mean, I loved her, like her solo stuff in particular yeah, as yeah. well. But you know, G has always been or Jaya, sorry, um, is like. Yeah, totally up there, too. You know, like, I feel like a lot of her releases have just sort of been a little under the radar, like mm -hmm. not, you know, she did release something earlier this year, too, but I feel like a lot of people weren't really talking about it. Oh, I definitely you know, missed that. Like, I, th I think it was called, like, Good Boy or Good Girl or Bad Girl or something. Um, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, <laughs> Jay. Girl, I, I, girl, I, I, like, bad didn't, boy. <laughs> I didn't even, I, you know, I'm so sorry. I'm pretty sure it's called Bad Girl. But, <laughs> but yeah, you know, like, I, I just think, you know, they're just such talents. Like, I don't know. I, yeah. I still, like, love <laughs> almost, like, everything that they do. Right, right. I mean, um, they're, they're each able to hold their own, which yeah. says a lot. And, you know, it's very weird, but, like, this song kind of reminds me of something I would feel like like an R&B singer in, like, America would kind of do. Oh, for like sure. Some, yeah. You know, like, one of, you know, putting out, you know, l so many people put out Christmas music. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not anything new. But like, you know, Tony Braxton actually had a really good Christmas album, like from a few years right. ago, and I love I that was album. I was actually gonna say, like, would would this be some similar to something on like Tamar Braxton's? Oh album Oh my God, or you something? said Tamar. Yeah, I'm talking. I'm thinking of Tony Braxton. Yeah, it's kind of like you know, it just kind of it's very vocal heavy. It kind of yeah. you know gets you know, it's a nice vocal performance and delivery right. and everything. And I right. think yeah, it kind of did what it had to do, and it's not over the top or anything right, i think right. it's just kind of nice for her you know and, and if anything it's, just, it's, it's pleasant <laughs> yeah exactly you know like sometimes there's some quirky k-pop christmas songs but i i yeah i, I love this one kind of stayed in its lane yeah in a nice way in a nice in a comforting way. way it's a nice yeah. thing to like start off the holiday season winter sure. season and so yeah i'm uh I'm, I liked. I'm, I I thought the video really reflected the song well. I yeah. thought it was very cozy. It was uh, her and I guess her boyfriend or male companion, whatever, <laughs> and they were making music, making like literal music in like right. a. Was it like a trailer? It looked like a trailer. I think it was a trailer, and inside it was obviously decorated to fit the festive mood. There were lights strung up. It was very cozy. Right. Um, they were at a piano, and they had like guitar set up. Um, mics and everything like their own little like cozy mini stripped down studio essentially yeah. and um, I will <laughs> say the video was nice it was just like it, I felt like it kind of went on a little too long it was like the whole thing was just them and like frolicking around the trailer <laughs> or in like the field out south like, yeah. outside of the trailer the and I feel like four minutes of that was a little bit monotonous to me <laughs> so I was getting a little bit bored yeah. but you know it kind of fits the song where like the song doesn't really like really go anywhere mm -hmm. it's just it, it just is. Yeah. <laughs> if you that know, makes any sense. No, 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 no. I think you're totally on point. You know, it was cute video, nothing insane, you know, nothing too yeah. crazy. It's just sort of like it was nice a company, nice accompaniment to a nice song. Yeah. You know, like um, it was comforting. I liked it. Right. Like it probably would have been a little too much, especially in November. Mm -hmm. If like, you know, she was in, you know, a Santa outfit and whatnot, you know, right, right. shout out to Tiara. I like that it's, um, it's kind of like multi-seasonal. Yeah. You know, it, totally. you can't really say it's fall or winter. Sure. I guess it is that kind of transition period. Yeah. Well, she does talk about Christmas in the lyrics, right? 
I think yeah, so. I don't she know. Does. I mean, the song is Winter, It's You, yeah. but I guess, like, <laughs> visually. Yeah, it kinda right, right. Is so in it's, that yeah, multi seasonal. Yeah. You're coming. Yeah. Multi seasonal trend. What did you say? What did you say? Trend aligning. Trend aligning. I love all these like uh, compound Random words. You're making. I, like, I love hyphenations. Can you not you tell? Do. I'm loving it. It's, <laughs> it's like it's putting me on blast as, as, the, as, the, as the, you know, writer. So good job, Tina. Oh my gosh. Oh, yay. But yeah. yeah, no, I think I think it's like great. I'm, I'm you know, I love it. I don't know. I'm hoping yeah. I'm hoping. I I hope Brown Eyed Girl Brown Eyed Girls usually take a while in between albums. Like they, you know, they didn't they released something last year. I love that album. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Gun's supposed to put out a part two to her EP. That's right. Uh, later this part year, one was but great. we'll see if it happens. But yeah. yeah, if anything, I'm just hoping keeping the Brown Eyed Girls <laughs> brand alive and you know oh, ten yeah. plus years. I was about to say that those are veterans. They like, are. They are. Say the least. So. Yeah. So let us know what you guys think if, if your vote goes towards J.O. or if it goes to Vix or if it goes to Sistar and Giorgio. Yes. Mr. Giorgio. What's your pick for this week? Ooh. Best release? What is my pick? Um. It. I don't know. In the end, I do feel like it'll be Jaya just because, like, I don't really like Christmas music that much. Mm-hmm. And I, I did really like this because I kind of. I mean, like, I love that sort of cozy feel yeah, for yeah. it. Right. And I'll probably end up playing that one more in the end. But right, right. now it's one more day just because it's just so it's like it's hitting the spot. I'm right. just like, yeah, I, like, I love the video. I I'm actually agreeing with you on like all accounts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I do think I would play Shea song um, just in my apartment while I'm, you know, drinking a glass of wine, maybe, mm. you know just chilling right it's very wintry and cozy so i do like that um but in terms cohesively um and then obviously with the message and the impact it could potentially bring i would choose one more day as the best release but yeah let us know what you think is the best release go to fuse.tv just gonna be a poll yeah please vote a playlist of all the music we're talking about listen to it all All right, let's get into our chart section. Our we where we take a look at the top five song K-pop songs on US iTunes right now. And coming in at number five is One More Day. Oh yay! Yeah, I'm actually kind of excited to see that. That fans are already jumping in on yeah. this one. So that's good for Sister and awesome. Giorgio. Um, Rodar. So yeah, hopefully this can maybe maybe it'll have a cool impact. We'll see. We'll see. Number four, a song that will never go away. Oh God. Fire. Oh okay. Uh-oh, what I were thought we about you were gonna say, say monster. Oh, I was boy. like, no, enough. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I do love that song. But <laughs> 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 but yeah, BTS still up there with fire. Number three, tell me what to do. Yes. Shiny. Great. They were number great. one last week, right? Oh yeah, it was a top five shiny last week. Remember oh, that? Oh yeah. Th- oh yeah. That was crazy. They, th- they like took yeah, over. They, they kinda, you know <laughs> I li- sh- no, yeah, all the songs. I can't even see that the songs like all fell out of like the top forty basically. But tell me what to do is still up there. Number two is <gasps> TT. I'm oh like TT. Oh my god, oh. no. Na 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 Oh, Tina, don't say ew. Oh, I, sorry. I let still me, can't. Let me calm down before people, before, before uh, folks for, come, for the at, come for us. Like, yeah, again. Um, yeah, TT's still up there. You know, and actually, I'm kind of surprised at that because I wasn't sure if this one was going to kind of resonate with U.S. audiences. Because, right. you know, they, they're doing quite well in Korea, but they're still up there. Because I don't remember Cheer Up even doing that well in the charts here. I like Cheer here. Up better than this. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, we disagree there. But, um... <laughs> And last but not least, coming in at number one, back at number one actually is My Love is on Fire. Blackpink. Oh my god, I'm sorry. I like didn't know what was happening. I know, I kind of threw in a yodel there. Yeah, I was like, what is this? Um, it was Blackpink. As I like stare blankly for a yeah. s- half a second. Tina gave me a weird look at that <laughs> one. I apologize to anyone else um, who was listening and gave me a weird look too. Do I don't you, still, think. you still like that song, right? Yeah, uh, it's kind of grown on me more and more. So, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't, I think 
you know, I kind of, I see it more and more. Like, okay. you know, stay hasn't resonated with me anymore. But playing with fire, I'm kind of like, I feel it more and more as I listen. Yeah. And, you know, I, I like, I thought they've done good performances with it. So, yeah. yeah. I'm happy. And fun fact, Blackpink just charted on the Canadian Hot 100. Oh, I saw that. The, you know, not, not, not U.S. yet, but mm-hmm. in Canada they charted, which is kind of crazy because no girl group has even charted yeah. in Canada. The Canada Canada's singles chart. A special land. They are, you know, XO yeah. and BTS, and of course, Psy has, you know, they've done well there. But Blackpink coming hard, coming hard for Canada yes. and the rest of the world. <laughs> so, with that being said, um, we thought, you know, with the timing and everything, would we thought it'd be kind of cute to make this a thanksgiving themed episode and talk about the things that we are thankful for in In k-pop this year you know this is like anything right yeah totally i I mean it can kind of take it take you know this can be loosely interpreted we want to hear what you guys are quote unquote thankful for in k-pop this year Um, mine are kind of all over the place but they all pretty much pertain to this year yeah no that's perfect yeah exactly so so yeah it would be like yeah i think it would at least what I'm kind of going off of too is like what I'm thankful for this year in particular. Okay. So do you want to kick it off? Should I kick it off with one? I have like four main points. So yeah, far. I have like four, five. <laughs> Some of them are like less like <laughs> important than others or like th- th- there's not much to say for a couple of them. But I guess sure. why don't we just like we each like yeah. say one. Okay. S- count our blessings. Kick it off, Jeff. All right. I'm going to kick it off with saying I am thankful for kind of the more K-pop kind of being more aware and a bit better about sort of seamless collaborations, collaborations that kind of make a little more you know, that are because I think every, you know, if you're kind of a long term K-pop fan, you remember when you'd hear like some big media played thing out about like how like Akon is on their single or um, random rapper right. who hasn't had a right. hit in seven years. Is and on it was this. super forced and it was obvious. So for, it was, you it know, was such a play into, yeah. you know, Western market. And, you yeah. know, this year we, you know, someone like Dean, who's just doing all the right things, I think, yeah. is like, you know, like really on top of it with like sort of like his collaborations. You, c- you can even say the Sistar collaboration. It felt a little random, but it wasn't. It made sense, and it made for a good product in the end. You know, right. Eric Nam did so many cool things this year. Um, kind of those those things, you know, mm-hmm. we're kind of seeing, like, you know, more songwriting from, you know, Western artists that makes sense right, that aren't just right. being used for, like, the media play purposes or, or things like that. And I say that's what I'm kind of thankful for because it's not, like, cheesy anymore. It's not kind of like, yeah, they worked with – um. Um, this rapper, right. and it's kind of, uh, I know it's a little embarrassing to, you know, admit to a friend, but now you can be like, hey, this is so kind of cool. Like, what do yeah. you think of this? You know, like, right. oh, yeah, no, Dean's cool because he worked with, you know, so-and-so and so-and-so, in yeah. addition to these cool people, you know, in Asia and Korea. So that's right. kind of. It was that's much more of a process. Yeah, exactly. You know, you saw, like, um, Method Man popping up on CL's video yeah. and a song that interpreted his song Method Man. You right. know, like it there was. Are, kind there, of are like mo- there are many more layers to it now. Exactly. Like, it so. was more. I, li- I like. I keep using the word seamless, but yeah, it was more no, like sure. you know, it kind of came into it a little more. Right, it made right. more a little sense. bit more smooth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, going off of Dean, one of my um, things I'm thankful for is just the the rise of. R&B oh. and I guess I don't know some people don't like using the term alt in anything yeah. but alt R&B kind of more, more, more like instrumental R&B yeah, totally R, like R, with some R&B hip hop and I feel like that in Korea um, in, uh, is still kind of um, it's it a didn't, new it thing didn't, right it didn't really like break out or have its big break in, until this year I feel like and mm. I think it, they really owe it to artists like Crush and Dean and mm. um, with the help like Zico kind of Zico's more hip hop though I guess more rap um, so to see those artists really be on the come up this year just really makes me happy because I, I just like seeing um, like hearing new sounds from from Korean artists and yeah. doesn't necessarily have to be what we're used to hearing from idols. Um, more, I guess, more underground artists are becoming more mainstream. 
And so I'm just really thankful for Dean and Crush because <laughs> I love that type of sound. And um, I didn't expect it to, I guess, become this popular right. this year. So, And, you know, something – uh, in addition to that, that I, I'll even say too, is that like, you know, for the longest time it was like, R- if you were a ballad singer, it was like R&B or like, oh, yeah. or if you like just were like a solo act, you were right. like R&B. Right. Now it's kind of, it's becoming a little more, you know, like the, the, the aperture is widening, you it's know, like, it's becoming trendy. It's, it's becoming that actual space R&B. that June K of 2 PM has lived <laughs> in his entire freaking career, but it wasn't until this past year where they're like, oh, that's kind of, it's like now that, and then then June K released something. They're like, he sounds like Dean. I'm like, listen, yeah. girl, this has been his <laughs> June listen, K's girl. vibe for years. It's just <laughs> yeah. there wasn't really like a market for it until recently. Yeah. But like, like that whole ballad R and B like tinge of hip hop in there. Right. That was all June K for a hot minute. So he just announced a solo concert. I know. Tina. I know. I'm glad I'm. You should fly. Nope. I'm glad I'm in no financial position <laughs> to do that. I would have no money. Oh, gosh. Um, or I blow whatever money I don't have or whatever. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so really happy about, about that nice. whole scene flourishing. Yeah. I'll, um, my next one is kind of about how um, I'm really excited or I'm very thankful for kind of the excitement and the exciting rookies and the new groups that are coming out because, you know, I think so, you know, it's almost like a little unfortunate. I feel like, you know, a lot of the groups that got really big um, sort of when K-pop sort of had this sort of international moment, like, you know, you think about Girls' Generation and Big Bang and Beast and 21 and, you know, Wonder Girls and all this stuff. They had sort of they were sort of at that place for a while they were sort of you know they've been doing it for a moment you know they might have not been as hungry as they might have been you know they were used to sort of like this world and you know they might have almost kind of underrated themselves because i think lots of times you know like if 20 you know for example like 21 you know had really accessible music really awesome stuff but you know they had almost been doing it for a while and they might have been you know ready to try other things when Mm -hmm. the rest of the world was sort of getting ready for you know 21 the group or whatever and they were kind of ready to do things outside of 21 we have a lot of these rookies now that are getting such an exciting reaction you know totally as a result of their scene you know the senior groups right, and you could right, even right. say the only way that these international groups even became international was because, because of the groups before them the but you know cetera, all these yeah. things but in any case these groups are are very fresh very hungry like they want to see things are big and the thing is too is that they're getting these awesome international reactions mm-hmm. and you know like like we were talking about even before you know black pink charting a single in canada like this is only their second time you know their second comeback or whatever you know what else is there to be seen from them Mm -hmm. which i think is so exciting you know you see you know someone like bts sort of leading you know the pack in that way too you know these groups are they're 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 they have more to kind of show i feel like as the group and i think it's so exciting there's so much more potential not that they didn't have the earlier the, se- the senior groups didn't really have potential. Mm. I just feel like there were, they felt like there were more limitations to when they were big uh, in, I in agree. their prime. Yeah, no, totally right. That's a good way to think about it. It just felt like there was something holding them back, whether that mm-hmm. was, you know, their commitment to what they've sort of shown in the past with, you know, Korea or mm-hmm. Asia or Japan or what have you. You know, now it almost feels like it's sort of like an open road. Right. Like they can kind like of. Like anything's fair game. Yeah. Like you see someone even like Got7 who just announced another U.S. tour right. for this year it's like a fan meeting tour or sorry it's coming at the top of next year Mm -hmm. but you know i think we're gonna see you know kind of more dedication to you know really if america was always sort of the place we were always hoping they'd come and they were always you know you know praying that you know their your group would show a tour i think now these newer groups are kind of thinking in america as they are you know the other sort of territories and whatnot so it's very exciting to see that there's such an excitement over these new groups and they're kind of equally excited about what can come from america so you know i was sort of worried like as some of these groups kind of you know slowed down and whatnot Mm -hmm. what would sort of happen but there seems to be 
sort of a the natural. The momentum is still going. The momentum it's not was dying there, down but it kind of almost has like a new bite to it or yeah. a new ferocity. Right, 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 for sure. Ferocity for with sure, it. For sure, for sure. So that's what I'm thankful that's for. That's really no. That's a really <laughs> good point. Um, a, honestly, a couple of these are of mine are really quick because there's yeah. not much substance. To Go it. for it. It's just me shouting out "Got Seven because I think they're <laughs> dope and I like. Oh. Okay, listen. Um. I was going to say, before you freak out. I'm not freaking um, out. I'm just saying. Yeah. Flight log departure. Departure, right. right. Yeah, not turbulence. Yeah. Not turbulence. Departure. That's my shit. <laughs> um, I thought, like, they just kept it really fresh. So, shout out to GOT7. Yeah. Um, and maybe. then. Uh, They're not coming to New York, sadly. I know. And then, sorry, I'm going to do a double just because both it. of these are really quick. Um, and then Taeyang for continuously surprising me with oh. every release. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to lie. Like, I did not expect her to blow me away, like, <laughs> with all of her singles this year. Oh. She has been so consistent. And while she tried different sounds, it was still very, like, Taeyang. And, yeah. Um, yeah, just, like, I love all her. I love all her singles released this year. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I'll give an artist shout out too. You know, I'm thankful just to for what BTS accomplished with the Wings album. Yeah, you know, I was just waiting so for this. yeah. I mean, it was just such a moment. You know, I got you know even people, lots of you know random you know outside outlets you know reaching out to me to be like you know why is this happening you know what is the deal with this and you know I even you know wrote something you know in Billboard magazine about it because it was like how did this happen you know and yeah. it's like oh okay you know it's cool and you know it, it totally was like a combination of you know all the things they've been working for this humongous fan base that they've had um the other day like did you see this like wale shouted out rap oh, monster yeah. for for including one of his beats he did song. a cover of a wale song yeah. and then someone tweeted mentioned wale in her retweet right and then he was like collab i know oh so you know like they're kind of getting you know they're doing the right things you know i'm just i'm thankful that it's this is not shade to anyone i'm thankful it's a group like bts who clearly have a lot of interest and dedication to mm -hmm. to america and, and american music right. and you know the lots of artists that are yeah like working here right, right. So. expansion yeah, yeah. so i, I guess sure. i'm just and you know it was such a big moment for kit and it showed right. you know because i was getting nervous you know for the longest time i was like oh yeah 21 at the highest charting album xo had the biggest selling album in 2015 mm -hmm. uh, 21 was 2014 i'm like i don't know if anyone's gonna like break any records right. this year and then BTS just blew all the records out of right. the water. And I, I personally did not see that coming, but I will say they do seem like the most promising act going yeah. forward. So we'll see. So, so knock on yay, but, thank, Totally. Um, <laughs> okay, so I guess kind of my last main one is mm. I'm thankful that after a decade – Big Bang is still, oh, good know, one. Th that they are here and that despite Top leaving for, right. you know, military enlistment very soon, that they are going to drop the freaking Made album. <laughs> and I did say in the in that episode, was it last week, where I, pre or not predicted, but I was saying I hope that um, they would drop the album yeah, we as soon as, like, the end of the month. Yeah. Um, if they want enough time to also promote it with Top. Right. So I'm hoping that it is within the next week or well, two. Well, guess what, Tina? Because it is, right? They just announced December 12th. Really? When did they announce yeah, that? like this morning. Oh, <laughs> like, okay. I was like, where yeah. have I been? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's not that soon. It's soon enough. Soon I'm enough like, for I'm them like, to okay. cash in on that, on yeah. those Christmas <laughs> orders yeah basically yeah so um okay I'm that's that's good that's so good i'm really excited yeah, so curious I'm, I'm thankful for that as well because i'm like yeah. oh because you know if anything i will say you know they might be the one to break that bts record you oh, know yeah. so we'll They're see like I'm final like, like yeah, oh my gosh i'm like, like getting chills just I thinking hope about america that. turns up you know yeah. for it and so we'll i'm see. just like stoked that like we're gonna have uh, tunes for the holiday yeah. week you i know? hope it's new i hope for it's our for our plane ride to our respective homes yes, exactly. <laughs> when we visit our families. <laughs> um, yeah. Any more? Um, yes. The, these will, these are kind of quick too, but oh, yeah. um, this is a little, um, a little random and maybe a little embarrassing, but I'm going to say it anyway. So last <laughs> week at the, at the M M A. Uh, mama? Uh, no, oh, no, not mama. That's not. It was either the it was yet. either the, um, the Asia star awards, the MMA awards, one of those awards show Nana, 
from After School won an award for her acting, oh. and she shouted out her. Um, she thanked her uh, after school members, and oh, okay. it gave me hope that this group is not dead yet and that <laughs> after school still lives on <gasps> oh it my gave goodness. me hope that and also Pledis' ceo <laughs> like mentioned after school slash orange caramel in like a a a instagram post that he did mm-hmm. um it gives me hope that maybe just maybe the group that got me into k-pop is not dead yet and, and the, that's actually maybe, really big maybe yeah. they're you know because she could have just said you know my company or my you know yeah. my my members or but she specifically said right. the after school members who give me strength right and Aww, i was so like cute. okay Maybe <gasps> there's maybe there's just the slightest just bit like, of hope, <gasps> you know, because they really were that group that got me into K-pop. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we haven't heard from them in three years now. So yeah. very curious what that was all about. Yeah. So, yeah. And then um, my last one is just, you know, thankful that KCON had, had celebrated its fifth year, five year anniversary That's this year. Right. And biggest. It's only getting bigger. Yeah. Two sold out dates in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. You know, I think they got like a, over a hundred thousand fans all together. Like wow. that is so awesome to see just that. Yeah. Cause you know, for the longest time, you know, I remember thinking like, Oh my gosh, like, you know, Gangnam Style happened and, you know, all these groups are getting older and, you know, things like that. But, you know, you have someone like BTS as a headliner right. in addition to having like shiny as a headliner in addition to having, twice and mm-hmm. 17 and ioi and all these groups you know that are kind of they represent so many different it's a very things. well-rounded oh uh, so well sure. yeah and they even had like yeah. turbo you know show right. up like as yeah. like you know throw up. shout out to like you know the old school fan yeah, yeah so it kind of like made me think oh my gosh like this stuff is it, it's thriving this right. like you know it's it's really amazing to see and i can only hope it, it goes you know, as strong um, in yeah. 2017. I don't know how they're going to outdo themselves, but they find I a way know. to do it every year. So I'm very excited. And um, yeah, definitely thankful for that as like yeah. kind of like my big, you know, these are like sort of the representative things, I right, feel right. like, you know. If I have something, one last one that's yes. super random. It's not like do a it. big representative thing. <laughs> but I'm thankful that JYP artists are finding love oh, within their totally. company because yeah. um so what a comeback first, story so first it was um Jin Woon from 2am and Yenny from Wonder Girls oh, which I literally did, finding love <laughs> yes which I did not see that I did not see I did not know that that was happening at all right so and they're they seem very oh. happy together and they're gonna be very cozy during this holiday season. Yeah. And then re- <laughs> more recently, it was revealed that Min from Miss A and G Soul right. have been dating. And I love both of them. I love G Soul. And it just take, it takes me back to when they, uh, <laughs> like, a f- like a f- years ago in like 09, when they were all at that JYP um, 32nd Street. Or was it 32nd Street or 35th Street? The one by k- the small JYP office near K Town. Oh, right. I mean, they would, th- that's when they were all vigorously trying to like break into the mm. US market. So they all like trained there a lot. 2 p.m. was there and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, and I think it's just so cute because oh. like I love G Soul. And, yeah. You know, uh, so, aww. I'm happy that it's like chill for them to, you know, date one another and, you know, yeah, no, it is. And cool. like for JYP to be cool with that. So, it's yeah. not, you know. And JYP's just sort of had a comeback story in and of themselves. If they were struggling, you know, they're they're back on top for Very sure. True. Just goes to show. And I think um, we both want to say we're thankful for K Stop and all our listeners. listeners. We yeah. love, you know, there's been so many of you guys, too many to name at this point. Like yeah. we're just, you know, giving us shout outs or, or yeah. helps promote the podcast or, or gotten ask the us word questions, out. Ask our thoughts on things. Yeah, we've loved interacting with you guys. Yeah, you know, please. Really appreciate it. You know, give it, let us know what you're thankful for, of course, but also, you know, we want to, you know, give you guys a shout out and, you know, we, 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 I, you know, we do our best to follow back on Twitter and, and right. respond on Twitter. So, yeah. Because we've like been doing this for like nine months. That's I know. A, over it's nine months. Crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. I think this is episode 42. My I gosh. Know. We're getting old. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, we really thank you guys. You know, the podcast, the numbers only get better every month. So we're so thankful. Yeah, thank you, we're thank so happy. You. Last month, like, was a, was a mind blowing month, you know, it in terms was, of numbers. Yeah. So we're just so happy and we're so, um, thankful. And we hope, you know, we'll, 
bring you guys more surprises, more yeah. awesome things. And yeah, we just really are are happy that you guys uh, are with us for every episode. True that. True that. <laughs> so I think that's a perfect note to wrap up things yeah. on. Um, thank you as always for tuning in. Have a happy Thanksgiving, happy everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we for love those celebrating ya. it. Obviously. Yes, <laughs> exactly. We're thankful for you. We love you. Sarangeo or however you yeah. say it. And Sorry. yes. And All right. um, we'll see you next time. See you As next always, week. this has been Jeff. And this is Tina. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>